guys, how are you today? We are here for another digital background collaboration with Ayala Art, uh, Shell C, and Bea Grob. Um, we are here with the fall backgrounds. Now, I will tell you the truth. Obviously, if you see these backgrounds that I printed that we all shared with each other, my printer was kind of running out of ink. So it didn't print all, that's my background. And I will try to remember to link it in the description below, free for you all if you wanna download it. If I forget, somebody remind me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it printed this one, which uh, this is I believe shells um, and mine perfectly. And then I started to run out of ink. And I was gonna reprint them and I thought, you know what, these are interesting and I think they'll go with what I'm going to do. And I think I'm gonna leave them. So if you've ever gotten, especially something from my Etsy shop, you know, you probably got one of these little cards. I also use these to put into little gifts and things. Um, like this one says, thinking of you. Um, I use them at Christmas time, birthdays, holidays, like I use them a lot. And this is literally all I have left. I don't have any more. So I need to make some more. So usually I layer papers and sort of focal point embellishments with the word on top. I have a little bit of a different idea. We're gonna use our digital backgrounds for the background paper. Um, the words, I have digital download printables you can get in my Etsy shop, um, and then you can print sheets of these words that say different things. These are what I have currently, so we're going to use them, which took me a few minutes to find because I couldn't remember where I, <clears throat> quote unquote, put them away. <laughs> but you know, you've all probably been there, right? So anyway, so we've got our words. And um, we're gonna first take one of our existing cards and I'm gonna measure approximately what the background size of this paper is, which is about, help, it's helpful to put the reading glasses on, let's see, about two and a half-ish by four. So I'm gonna cut the backgrounds that I got from everybody and my own into pieces that are two and a half by four I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I thought I'd make a few of the cards this way this time and I thought I would share with you how I did that. Um, and I do think, I'm tempted to trim these off but I do think I'm gonna leave them because when I put it, the card in the envelope, they'll just get folded over. I kinda, I kinda like them sticking out like that. Anyway, okay, so I have one prepped here. I'm gonna show you how, how I did this. So I'm going to pick one of my pieces of paper to start with. Let's pick this one. First thing I'm gonna do is round the corners. Now I know this fits on the piece of paper I'm gonna use as the body of the card with a border to spare, which is important. If I can get that corner to chop off and round up nicely let's see if I can try that one more time there we go okay now I'm gonna rip it down the center this way I'm not gonna be super careful about it I don't mind if it's crooked in fact I want it to be a bit crooked like that then we're gonna ink the edges I picked out some fall colors of ink and I've got one of my blending brushes thank you shell C for telling me about these I'm going to use some Distress inks on a piece of paper. I'm just going to add some extra color to the torn edge. On both sides. Sorry about the squeaking if you hear that, that's the wheels on my table. At some point I need to just take the wheels off. Okay, and then I'm gonna probably pick a second color. And let's see. I think I wanna pick 
blue. So this is, um, well, it's a blue green. This is Evergreen Bow, and that was Barn Door. So this is sort of a dark bluish green. It's gonna mix with the red and it's gonna look brown or black, which is fine. These are gonna be just some fall inspired cards. God, that squeaking is annoying. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do that. And then I'm going to take the dark brown one here, which is Vintage Photo, which I didn't do on the first card I made, but I do think it's gonna make a difference um, in how it looks and I'm gonna like it better. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna rub it along the torn edge just to darken up that torn edge a bit. You could do this with a, any dark brown or black. See? I'm gonna do both sides. Like that. Okay, then I know from doing the first one, a mistake that I made is I didn't reinforce the paper for the next part. So you wanna just take some plain old tape, plain scotch tape, just run a piece along the back, um, close to the torn edge, um, to reinforce the paper, like that, okay? Then you want to put the two pieces together, sort of torn edges sort of close together. Take a pokey tool. And poke a few holes just at random they don't have to be measured or lined up or anything if you're the kind of person that needs them measured then do that but you just want to kind of make sure you go through the tape and you'll be able to feel it if you do so you want to do both sides and if you just do them at once it's easier I have another one right here So then you have holes, and the holes don't have to line up. Those definitely don't, but that's okay. The next thing you're gonna do is take a needle, and I have a large darning needle. Here it is. Large darning needle. And I've put some raffia through it. You could use string, of course. I have lots of string and floss. But I have this raffia and it just reminds me of fall. So I thought I would use it. So you're gonna start by going in the hole on one side. Leave a little bit of a tail. Come up the hole on the other side. You might wanna take this little tail right here and put a little clip just so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, then you're gonna go in this one. Yeah, in this one. And up this one, and just alternate all the way up. Now, if you don't tape your holes, you have to be a lot more gentle with this than I'm being right now because you will probably rip right through one of the holes I did the first time, just FYI. <laughs> okay. Something like that. Now, if before you do anything else, you might want to tighten or loosen up your stitches so if you want a piece of the background, 
paper to show through the rip, then you probably don't want to pull them super tight. Something like that. And then again, it's helpful to clip things so that you know kind of where you're going with it. You know, hold them. And again, you're working with paper, even though there's tape back there, you wanna be gentle because it is paper, you'll rip the paper. I mean, I obviously don't care if we're ripping the paper because I like the rip look, but you know, you get the idea. So then if you wanna go back down, you can, oops, do this, and then go up this hole. Down this hole. Up this hole. On this hole. And this one. And I would probably stop there. And let me cut that. Okay, and again, adjust our paper. I'm gonna put this one over here. I'm going to take a piece of just natural craft colored cardstock. My desk is a disaster. Okay, we're gonna use a scoring board to score it down the center, which I don't think you can see. I think I'm slightly off camera doing this. Maybe you can see it a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna fold it in half. You could do these any size. I like these little small um, cards because I can stick them easily in Etsy orders. Um, and I found envelopes to fit them. Um, this is a four and a half by six and a half sheet of um, cardstock from Hobby Lobby. And um, I will put the link for the envelopes, which I got on Amazon in the description below. I'm going to put some glue on the back. Someday. Glue is almost empty. I need to put it in a jar upside down. Really? I just use, as you can see, plain old Elmer's glue. Nothing fancy. Okay, and then I'm going to center it. I want to hold those lines open a little bit. Wipe away any excess glue with my fingers and or a rag, which I have nearby. Move the extra piece of raffia. Gonna move our strings a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> now, when I did the first one, I put just a little bit of glue down here to hold these down. I don't know that that's completely necessary. Um, because you can, I'm going to put a, a word label over it, but I would do it anyways. And I'm going to put my word label here. And how cute is that? It's just a cute way to make a little card. Now, you can do them the way I did them before. 
I did I did one of these as a sample. So I'll show you how I did that. This is how I usually do them. Now, if you're like me, you have bins and drawers full of handmade embellishments, hello, like this. Again, I do sell some of these as digital download copies in my Etsy shop, so you can just print them and then cut that, sit and cut them out. <clears throat> um, you start the same way, so you corner round your piece of paper. This is a great way to use up painty papers, digital downloads. If you're like me and you have maybe misprint downloads, sometimes I do these with misprint downloads. I'm gonna open a new glue for the sake of convenience. I do, I do the same thing. I score the cardstock down the center. You could tuck dried flowers in here. You could chuck, you could do, do this with literally with anything. Um, put the Elmers in the back of your paper. I love all these digital downloads everyone did. They're so pretty and so fall inspiring. Take my rag out and Wipe away the excess glue, make sure everything's stuck down like that. Grab an embellishment that I think will fit and work. I have literally, I've, like this drawer is so full, people. No, I like one of those other ones. Like the, ooh, I got one. Do I have another one that's orange? That other one I used was kind of orange. Ooh, that one might work. See. Sometimes finding the right one's the hardest part. I know you all know what I mean. Oh, here, wait, maybe that one. Yep. So then once I pick the embellishment, again, we use, just use the Elmers. That's probably way too much glue, just FYI. I'm gonna like wipe some with my finger, spread it out a little bit, because I'm fairly certain that's way too much glue. Okay. Stick that down. Again with my rag, wiping away the excess glue. Now, I'm not a proper card maker. I just do these little like car art cards. I don't, you know, I'm sure proper card makers are out there screaming, you don't do that that way. <laughs>
okay. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. But this is how I do it. There you go. So whichever way you do it, whether you want to do some traditional cards or you want to um, take a shot at stitching some cards, these are really cute. I will be making a couple more of these. Um, I think using the digital backgrounds um, this month uh, for doing some card making and getting ready for the fall and sending out uh, little notes and you know reminders thinking of you over the holidays when we aren't sure we're gonna be able to see everybody because of the worldwide situation. I think it's a good thing. So there you go. Check out everybody else's videos. They're in the description below. Don't forget to check everybody's video description for different ways to support the free content, not only here on YouTube, but over in the Facebook art groups. Um, I have ways, uh, you can click on my link tree list of links in the video description. Pretty much everybody has some ways, at least one. If you can't figure out from their video descriptions, ask them and see if they have a way. And if you are so able to, I know they would probably appreciate the help. Um, that's it for today. Don't forget to stay safe, stay creative, stay healthy, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.